book. It's Jerry coming to you from Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in uh, <coughs> Guanacaste, Costa Rica. I'm sorry, I have a little cough. It is a gorgeous day, and I mean a gorgeous day at Rhythmia. <laughs> it's a special week this week. Uh, we've been super packed, super, super, super packed. Uh, and this week we have my good friend, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith here. Uh, so it's just a, a very exciting week. And he's just such an amazing speaker and orator and uh, understanding of spirituality is beyond compare. He's amazing. Before I get into that, I want to talk a little bit about Rhythmia. Rhythmia is a life advancement center that had over 13,000 guests come through here. And 95.75% of them report electronically that they had a life-changing miracle during their stay. Talk about that in a minute. The better part is 91.88% at six months uh, say that this is the week that changed their life and that the miracle that they got is still with them and still working. Now, uh, because of this, this uh, great event or, or great program that happens at Rhythmia, we've become one of TripAdvisor's top 10 resorts in the world with over 2,100 um, uh, uh, reviews. And uh, based on percentage of five-star reviews, we are one of the top 10. And in the world, that puts us up against Waldorf, Astoria's Four Seasons, uh, Ritz Carlton's, all that, and and uh, we're doing great. So I, I want to talk about a couple of different things. This past week, and we have big announcements coming. I've been working on these things for seven and eight months, and uh, we have a really big announcement coming probably within the next two weeks. Uh, as these contracts get finalized over what, what this is. But anyway, I've been doing a lot of filming. And one of the interviewers last week was talking about this thing called a miracle and what's a miracle. <clears throat> I think it's important to understand that as we get into our discussion today about what works. So, so th this is what's interesting with plant medicine. And I have about 317 plant medicine journeys. So I'm over there a lot, wherever there is, and I, I do pick up some things and bring them back here. Uh, so what's a miracle? Either a miracle is everything or it's nothing. In other words, either everything is a miracle or there is no such thing as a miracle. Because if you watch a blade of grass grow, uh -huh, and you don't think that that's a miracle, that out of, or that that, that oak tree came from an acorn, uh, if you don't think that that's a miracle, if you don't think that that's a miracle, if you don't think a bird flying over is a miracle, if you've ever watched the birth of a child and you, or a horse or a, or a cat or a dog, and you don't think that that's a miracle, then nothing in your life is a miracle. Uh -huh. And yet, if you think that any one of those things are a miracle, then everything is a miracle, every single thing. So I want to talk about uh, the things that, that work as far as production, when I say production, I mean becoming a beneficial presence on the planet, which is a big uh, topic of Michael Bernard Beckwith, who is just my friend, but my idol at the same time, because he's so great at this. But, but I want to talk about a couple of things that I think are, are hyper important before you start. So before you start, you have to realize that everything is a miracle, every single thing, and that you yourself are a miracle. That, that physically we are all connected in some way and spiritually we are all one. Uh -huh. So this is like the start of the start of things. And then you have to get that the gift that you were given is to participate in this thing called life. If you understand that that is the only gift that you're given and then you're responsible for everything that comes after that, you're in a great place to start. Now, if any part of that is not lined up for you, I can pretty much assure you that you're not going to have success. What am I talking about? Well, we live in a society now. Uh, we're actually, uh, from, from a use standpoint, living uh, has never been easier than, it's, than it is right now. 
Living has never been easier. What do I mean? Because at one time, we had to hunt and gather our own food. Uh, we had to collect our own water. We had to cook our own food. We had to clean our own houses. We had to, to build our own shelter. Uh huh. This, there, there was a, a time when, when times were much, much, much rougher than this. Now, we live in a society where in order for some people to gain control over others, we pitch that you are entitled to get all of these things. I, I watch what people believe that they're entitled to get. People believe that they're uh, entitled to get taken care of when they're older. They believe that they're entitled to, to education. They believe that they're entitled to uh, food. They believe that they're entitled to shelter. They believe that they're entitled, 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 entitled. The, the list of entitlements go on and on. Now, in nature, and the, the thing is this, if you take a look at history, the more we diverge from what's nature, the bigger problems we get into. Uh -huh. So do I think that those are good things, giving food to people, shelter, health care? Absolutely. Do I think that it's a God-given right? Absolutely not. You know how I know this? Because if, if by chance you were the first person on earth and you were dropped into the jungle in Costa Rica, you wouldn't have health care, you wouldn't have shelter, you wouldn't have food, you would have to go forage food, you wouldn't have water, you wouldn't have, you would have to go get it all. So part, so if, if we say that is nature, that is what nature looks like. And if we can say that, hey, what is the gift in that then? Well, the gift is, the gift is being the opportunity being given the opportunity to participate in that, uh huh, to participate, to be, to look at being dropped on this planet in this garden of a of a planet, and saying, "Oh my God, <clears throat> how lucky I am to have been given life." Now the rest of it is up to me. What I make of this is up to me, uh huh. If you start from there, you're starting from a great place, and and it's easy to get convinced that people aren't doing enough for us, that we're owed more than we're getting. And, but once you go psychologically down that road, you're, you're on the road of, of receiving and not giving. And when you step into receiving and not giving is, is in my experience, where all of the problems start. All of the problems start there. So, so let's talk about, let's talk about the system. So, if you were uh, in my journey the other night up here, I was dropped into earth with nothing, right? Now I'm dropped into earth with nothing. Now, just like you are, when you come out of your mom, you, you have nothing, you have nothing, right? Uh, so you're dropped here with nothing. Now, uh, now I'm at choice. I get to choose how I want my movie to look. I get to choose how I want my the TV series of Jerry, uh, the movie of Jerry. How do I want my life to look? What do I want it to be? Now, every direction I could possibly move in is going to be hard. Every single direction I could possibly move in is going to be hard. What do I mean by that? If I'm an overachiever and I decide I want to be a huge beneficial presence on the planet, and I feel this calling to, to help others, it is going to be terribly hard, terribly hard, uh -huh. terribly hard. If I decide I want to be the best baseball player on the face of the earth, it's going to be terribly, terribly hard. If I decide I don't want to do anything and I want to sit on the couch and eat bonbons, it's going to be ridiculously hard. It is. If I decide I want to be single, it's going to be hard. If I decide I want to be married, it's going to be hard. If I decide I want to work, it's going to be hard. If I decide I don't want to work, it's going to be hard. Once you come to that realization, that realization, and each one is a different kind of art. So if I decide I want to get on, on welfare or some form of government assistance, and I don't want to do anything but watch, let's say, watch TV and I don't know, watch TV and do whatever you do in a day if you don't have nothing to do. I want to do that. 
then the regret that comes up as I age uh -huh, and the feeling of not carrying my own weight is going to be horrible, horrible. Uh -huh. And at some point, it's going to come home to roost uh -huh, because there's, there's karma and then there's earth karma and there's short-term karma and long-term karma. It all comes back and it usually comes back within a lifetime, right? So I have that. If I decide that I'm going to go and go gangbusters and really try to make a difference in the world, I'm going to have a ton of people who are against me. I'm going to have reluctant people who work for me. I'm going to have all of these things and it's going to be hard. Uh huh. Now, once I'm past, so I take a look at things in forms of decades, that most things in life take a decade. Most good things take a decade. They, they actually do. Uh, takes a decade to build a business, takes a decade to get to become uh, a masterful at music. It takes a decade. Things take a decade. But in that decade, at some point, if I choose the what's harder in the beginning, it becomes easier at the end. Uh-huh. <coughs> Follow me in that. If I decide to sit on the couch and be entitled or, or to give half of an effort, and, and this is something kind of trip people out, but half of an effort is equal to no effort, none. Either you're in or you're out, right? So if I decide to not put up an effort to sit on the couch and do that, that stays, it starts out easier and it gets harder because regret comes in. The other one starts out harder and gets easier. Now, I just said something. I want to bring it to this realization. You're both feed in whether you realize it or not. We are all going to have the same outcome, final outcome, whether you know it or not. The day that you were born, you were both feet in because there is no way out of this. Uh huh. There's only one way out. Uh huh. And it's the same for all of us. So you're already both feet in. So if you take all those things into account, and, and what I'm saying is if you take those things into account, the sooner you take that into account, the sooner you accept that as reality, the quicker you can make a decision on how you want to live the rest of your life. That's, that's what I'm getting to today because all of that starts with a decision. There's, there's a decision that's made that says, uh, hey, whatever your first name, hey, Jerry, hey, Dave, hey, Sam, hey, Mary, hey, that I don't like the way things are going. I really haven't taken it upon myself to take a global look at the things this guy just said, but I'm going to, and I realize that this is true. Now, from this day on, I want things to look different. That is a pivotal day. That is a pivotal day, and that can happen. Uh, I like the fact that it happens here in plant medicine and in this, this uh, controlled environment, and all that. but that can happen on your sitting on the bus on your way to work. That can happen sitting on the toilet. That can happen walking around the block. That, that realization, and from that, once you accept that as reality, uh, that you're both feet in, that you're not entitled to get anything, and that everything you do from now on is up to you, and it's all going to be hard, but you get to pick your hard. Once you get that, now we can start. Uh -huh. you'd, be, you'd be amazed at the amount of people that, that I get here that haven't had that conversation with themselves yet, uh, that haven't really had that conversation because in the world of appearances, it feels like, uh, and Michael Beckwith calls this uh, the first stage of consciousness, it feels like everything is happening to us. Uh huh. And when you're in that, <clears throat> that mind frame of everything is happening to me, then it's really hard to step back <clears throat> and take a look at what I said. Uh -huh. It's really hard because it's all happening to me. And I get people in here every week. Now, the majority of people that come here are or have been successful at life in some way. So the vast majority of people aren't in that stage, but I get people every week here. So let's say there's 95 people. There might be three that really believe <clears throat> that the whole thing was done to them, that this was all done to me. And by about Wednesday or Thursday, when they come around, 
it's the greatest feeling in the world because they get to see that nothing was done to them, uh -huh. that they participated in the whole thing. And that <clears throat> that is their fresh start. That is their start over again. Uh -huh. So the greatest conversation we have to have with ourselves is this one of, of truth, of the whole thing's a miracle. My, my first breath, my breath of life, it was an amazing miracle. And I've been able to participate in this miracle now for 59 years. And each day that I get up and I'm looking at the green side of the grass, I feel that I am the luckiest guy on earth. And I swear to you, as you get older, this becomes more, uh, you're more aware of it. But I wish I had that awareness at 20, I do. Uh, and and that I, I was promised nothing. I've been given nothing other than the opportunity to pick my own heart uh -huh. and, and to experience this life each and every day till it's to its fullest. Now, if you can get with that, if you can get with that, then the rest of everything becomes easy. The academic part of building uh, yourself as a beneficial presence on the planet is a system. It's a system. And I'm going to be going more into what that system is uh, over the next uh, few things. But I've said it before a million times. I'm going to break it down again and say what that system is. But the first and most important part of it is to realize that you're at cause. Uh -huh. That it's all up to you. If it's going to be, it's up to me. That it's all up to you. You're the star of your own show. You get to write your own script. You get to to cast it how you want, it is you, and you're not entitled to get anything. That's why if you take an unentitled person and give them food, they're very gracious. Uh huh. So, <clears throat> so like, uh, if you take an unentitled person and you give them good fortune, they're very gracious. If you take an entitled person and give them food, they'll judge the food. Oh, this wasn't what I was supposed to do. <clears throat> so... It's living in the world of, 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 of this not being entitled, right? Of not being entitled uh, actually puts us in a state of gratefulness all the time. And when you're in this state of gratefulness or gratitude, many more good things, because it's vibrational, come to you. Uh -huh. Many more good things come to you. Do you ever see... Somebody who complains, who's entitled and complains about everything, it never gets better. It never gets better because even when they win, it's wrong. Uh -huh. You can't do that and get a full experience of life. My whole thing is if I'm super lucky, uh, I have 30 more years left. If I'm super, super lucky, I want to grab the most amount of life that I can in those 30 years. I, however that looks, I want to get the most amount of life. I'm greedy for life. I'm greedy for life for this opportunity to be here and do something. I'm greedy for that. I want you to be greedy for it too. Uh huh. Because it's the mo it's the only game in town, right? It's the only game in town. So, so the first thing and the purpose of my talk today was to get folks to really see that, Hey, because, because, you know, I'm getting like a subsection of people here at Rhythmia that want to be aware, uh, have had some success, that, that uh, want to participate in this. So I'm getting a very high vibrating clientele. There's a bunch of people out there that haven't even considered this yet, that are still in the woe me, everything is happening to me stage of life. I don't get to see those people because I work here. Uh -huh. I work here. So if you work here, most of the people are around this way of thinking that, that, that are employees and people that come here are in this way of thinking by and large. So I don't get to see a lot of it. But when I am out on my own in Scranton or Philadelphia or Los Angeles and I see this big subsection of the population that believes the whole thing is happening to them to their detriment, I think, man, these people need to get some freedom in there because 
because it's a terrible place to vibrate in, in this space where they believe everything is happening to them and, and that they're entitled. So a <clears throat> beautiful yellow bird. <laughs> so the, the, uh, the thing today, the thing that I, I want to get to today, if you haven't had that talk with yourself, I suggest you get alone if you live in Los Angeles or Florida or wherever, and you can take a little walk. Uh, or, or if you're in an urban environment and you can get into a bedroom or a room or a closet where there's nobody there and get to yourself and just go through this thing and realize as bad as things are or as, or as, as difficult as they might seem to you at the moment, that it is a miracle that you're alive, that you are given this chance. And then once you accept responsibility for it, your life can change in a nanosecond, that everything that happened to you before is gone and you have a brand new fresh start for the future with one thought change. That's the greatest gift anybody can give anyone. So give it to yourself. Give it to yourself and say that today is the day that, that I'm going to change things. That today is the day. And the great part is the sooner you say yes, the sooner you can get through. Uh huh. The, the more you delay this talk the, with yourself, the longer th this delay happens, right? So, so when is the, I always say that, when is the best time to start saving money? Yesterday. Uh huh. That's always the truth. When was the best time to, to make good decisions? Yesterday. When was the best time to fall in love? Yesterday. When was the best time to... It's always yesterday, right? That, so this moment right now is the closest I can get to yesterday. And I want to start changing my life right now. Uh -huh. So if you can do that, and if you can have a few minutes to observe yourself and to see what you really believe, because, because you can't believe it's happening to you and still change what's going to happen next. You can't. Huh? Because if it's all happening to me, I'm at the mercy of every other thing in my life. Uh huh. I'm at the mercy of what my boss does. I'm at the mercy of what the bank does. I'm at the mercy of what the weather does. I'm at the mercy of what the newspapers say. I'm at the mercy of what's on CNN or Fox. I'm at the mercy. And it's not true. It's not true. Uh -huh. It's not true. You uh -huh, are accountable to you. Uh -huh. So that's what I want to leave you with for today. Until next week, God keep you, God hold you, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in as always. And please get down here. We are so busy. But get here. Get here and go through this thing and come out the other side. Why do I want people to come? Because when I see them two years later, four years later, six years later, and they tell me how good their life has gotten, uh huh, it's the greatest feeling in the world. There is no other feeling, not, that, not one that money can buy, that equals that feeling of knowing you had something to do with that. Uh huh. So God keep you, God hold you, God bless you, and we'll talk to you next week.